the concluding segment of our 35th Convocation Ceremony. Today's event is for the award of doctorate degrees, honorary degrees, conferment of Professor Emeritus, and induction into our University of Calabar alumni. Just before I bring in the registrar, we did something yesterday which we are going to replicate right now. We lost one of our valuable council members, Alhaji Danjuma Monga. Please, we are going to rise up and observe a minute silence in his honor. Mr. Chancellor, the pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, our Vice Chancellor, members of the Federal Executive Council here present, members of the National Assembly, your Highnesses, members of Council and Senate, my Lords, spiritual and temporal, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. In accordance with Section 4, Subsection 1 of the University of Calabar Decree Number 80 of 1970, I have the honor to invite the Chancellor, Al Haji Aminu Adobayero, to constitute and declare open the assembly as the 35th convocation of the University of Calabar for the purpose of awarding doctorate degrees. Professor Emeritus Confirmant and Presentation of Prizes. Ross, I don't know what I do now. I hereby declare open this assembly as the 35th convocation of the University of Calabar. I don't need to go and stand there. I'm using 300 millimeters. So, honorary scholar, Dr. Degrees, confirming of Professor Emeritus, launching of endowment fund and induction into Unicaraba alumni. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now respectfully invite the Chancellor, Alhaji Aminu Adobayero, to address the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, Executive Secretary, Ted Fund, the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor, University of Calabar, the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, other principal officers of the University, visiting Vice Chancellors, members of the Governing Council, University of Calabar, members of the University Senate, past Pro Chancellors. past vice chancellors, esteemed honorees, distinguished professor emeritus, members of the Cross River State Executive Council, the national president of Unical Alumni, the chairman board of trustees of Unical Alumni, our royal fathers, service commanders, Captains of Industries, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, friends and well wishers of our esteemed honorees, past award recipients, my dear graduates, members of the university community, parents and guardians, gentlemen of the press, malabites and malabresses, ladies. And gentlemen. I am most delighted as I stand before the staff and students of the University of Canada to perform yet again my official function of presiding over the scientific convocation ceremonies of the University of Calabar after my installation two days ago at the sixth chancellor of the great institution. 
the University of Calabar has been known over the years to have produced men and women who have excelled in various aspects of life and have contributed significantly to the betterment of mankind and our national development. Through the knowledge and service philosophy acquired from the university, a tradition has been established and this tradition must be followed by students who are graduating today. I urge you to always bear in your mind the motto of this university, which is knowledge for service. The knowledge acquired must be used or it becomes sterile. Lucky are those of you who have invested and acquired knowledge through this university and are being released to the world today. As you start out upon your chosen careers, you'll find out that you are at the crossroads. The path you follow is of your own choosing. The path to the left leads out to the barren fields and the road to the right is the path of righteousness, which leads to selfless service to the society and into glorious fulfillment. Therefore, it is incumbent on you to make the best choice. We have given you good education at the University of Calabar. Therefore, go forth, sprout out brightly and brilliantly, and provide quality service to humanity. Great achievements await you. Go forth. You are our ambassadors. We are proud of you. We are proud of you, and we wish you well. Assume the mantle of chancellorship of this great university. I will work tirelessly to ensure that the university remains competitive in the global academic community, as well as being the best university in sub Saharan Africa. Before concluding my speech, I wish to once again express my sincere appreciation to His Excellency. President Muhammad Bukhari for this exalted appointment as Chancellor. In the same vein, I wish to thank the Vice Chancellor, the entire staff of the university for the excellent job they have they are doing to ensure that the University of Calabar remains a center of excellence in all academic pursuits, particularly in teaching, research and innovation. As you all live here today after this ceremony, I urge you to go with a new mantra that is to build a better future for the University of Karaba and Nigeria at large. May Almighty Allah guide us into realizing our dream for the University of Karaba and for our country, Nigeria, where peace and progress on this way. Long believe the University of Calabar. Long believe the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May God protect all the people of the nation. Mr. Chancellor, our University Chancellor, your Highnesses, members of the National Assembly, my Lords, members of Council and Senate, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now respectfully invite the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, General Martin Luther Aguay, CFR, to address convocation. Your Excellency, the Governor of Cross River State, the <coughs> Honorable Minister of State, who is standing in for our visitor, Right Honorable Good Lord Nana Obia Opia.
the Chancellor of our University, His Highness, Alhaji Abu Adubairo, Sarkin Kanu. The Honorable Speaker of the Cross River State House of Assembly, members, distinguished and honorable members of National Assembly and State Assembly here present, my Lord, the Chief Justice of Cross River. The Chancellor and uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Calabar, our dear, I call her Iron Lady, Professor Florence Obi. <laughs> Members of Governing Council, visiting chancellors and co-chancellors and vice-chancellors that are present with us, deputy vice-chancellor of our universities, principal officers of the university, dean, director, head of department and coordinating units, our royal majesties and highnesses, members of our senate and congregation, our distinguished invitees, staff, students, and alumni of the University of Canada, our dear graduates, members of the fourth estate and rank, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to, and honor to formally welcome you all to the 35th convocation ceremony of our dear university for the award of doctorate degrees across faculties and disciplines and confinement of emeritus professor. I thank God for the opportunity and appreciate our visitor who is ably represented today by our uh, Minister of State, Right Honorable of Nana Opia for the appointment, for my appointment as the co-chancellor and chairman of council. And that has given me this singular privilege to address this August gathering. The importance of university education is creating knowledge for national and global development cannot be overemphasized. With the advent of knowledge economy of the 21st century, education has become a key factor in the development of the critical mass of manpower needed to deepen our democracy and drive national development in Nigeria. It is worthy to note that universities in Nigeria are not immune to the peculiarity of resource reality, including cash flow challenges, which have been the lot of the country in recent years. Despite the dwindling re revenue, the federal government has over the years sustainably increased the statutory funding of federal university and to this we are grateful to our visitor represented today by our honorable minister of state for education we know there are a lot of competing national priorities and needs but the government has not forgotten us a critical team of funding comes from the Tertiary Education Trust Fund and, and in, uh, interventions, while alien sources of funding include the needs assessment project, donation, grant, 
endowment and support from alumni association. The 13th Governing Council will therefore strive to make sure that the University of Calabar, Unicorn in short, is not indifferent to the mounting demands of good governance, ethical conduct, quality functional education, financial poverty, accountability, and unambiguous transparency. Today, the challenges of Nigerian university system are enormous and multi-dimensional, including the persuasive inadequate understanding of the critical mandate of education, knowledge, research, and innovation in anchoring national development and global competitiveness. The stake for the governing council of, the, of UNICAL is indeed very high. We will continue to demonstrate effective leadership and stewardship in relation to the governance of the institution and protect institutional reputation, exploit alternative funding sources, encourage periodic review of financial management for accountability and commitment to national development. Council as the APEC policy-making body has adopted the best practices of governance, working with management and senate to ensure we improve the national and global ranking of our university. We will continue to support management to reposition the University of Calabar from the ethnic free zone to a center of excellence within knowledge industry. In the light of the foregoing, the act of governance at the University of Calabar level should not be treated with kid gloves, as it is imperative to ensure that all components of the university system are functioning at optimal level for the purpose of achieving the desired outcome. Consequently, the need for a strong synergy and synergy between university governing council and management as well as Senate congregation and convocation in order to build a system resilient and team spirit to identify stability, good reputation, and sound academic culture in the university system cannot be overemphasized. There is no doubt that the UNICAD is grossly underfunded partly due to the dwindling inflow of funds from government, as I said earlier, and other sources, and partly as a result of inability of the university to optimally reflect on its vast human and intellectual resources to create, diversify, and expand alternative funding sources. Council and management will work to address this gap. It is also common knowledge that the poor funding issue by sometimes fall under poor management of available resources. Negative aspect of this has quality and quantity effect on the education system itself. However, the 13th Governing Council is playing a general role of overseeing the finances of the university and making sure that the available funds are effectively and efficiently managed by adopting cost sharing mechanism among stakeholders in, all, in areas such as human resources, infrastructural facilities, and information and communication technology. To minimize funding challenges in the university, stakeholders and development partners should participate in funding education. Management and Senate are now pursuing, pursuing excellence in teaching, research, and organization of the university along with the university community, as well as provision of community service with 
goal of meeting the needs of the society. The Alumni Association of the University is being encouraged to strengthen, to improve the funding profile to the extent that the institution can go beyond the current level of investment and get involved in real estate blue chip companies and like to boost the internally generated revenue Ladies and gentlemen, to be on the right side of history in, the, in this garden of knowledge, ideas and values, we as council are committed to the task of building this university by playing the role expected of us individually, collectively, and responsibly. With deep sense of seriousness and sincerity of purpose, to a large extent, the success of the University of Calabar depends on the supportive, cooperative, active, and positive action of all stakeholders. Finally, our dear visitors, on behalf of the 13th Governing Council, I express our profound gratitude to you, the visitor, and our President and Commander-in-Chief, ably represented today by our Honorable Minister of State for Education. I also have gratitude also goes to the Minister of Education, our Chancellor, the Executive Secretary of National University Commission, the Executive Secretary of TEPFA, the management staff and students of the University of Calabar for the cooperation and synergy leading to the success of the 35th convocation ceremony. We also sincerely appreciate the active participation and support of our special guests and graduates in this 35th convocation ceremony of our dear university. God bless the University of Calabar. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Council members, visiting vice chancellors, principal officers, former vice chancellors, serving chiefs, array of fathers, chairman, board of trustees of alumni, Director University, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is with all delight and a, an absolute gratitude to God that I most warmly welcome you on behalf of the University Senate and Management, staff and students of the University of Calabar to the PhD convocation to crown the 35th Convocation Ceremonies of our University. Our choice of having this day separate in this hall in full recognition is in full recognition of the significance of the PhD as well as the fact that Attaining PhD is the highest academic achievement. Hmm. We choose to gather here today to celebrate our distinguished doctors of philosophy. We do this because we want to attract the needed attention and inspiration as well as remind the graduates of their role in the society to seek, promote, and constructively apply knowledge to the service of mankind wherever they find themselves. Knowledge is the reason for the existence of any university, and all programs are structured towards enhancing knowledge in a particular area by providing a handle of compass to the students on how to navigate life generally. And the PhD 
is the highest, again I said, academic program in this direction through rigorous research and examination. It is therefore a matter of profound delight to the institution when people are judged worthy in character and learning to be awarded a Doctor of Philosophy degree for our graduates. Today's ceremony marks an academic accomplishment. Yes, it is a place that is quite challenging for you. Let me specially congratulate you on the successful completion of your program and the award of the degree that you have desired for the chosen field. Which I am confident will open doors into the vistas of opportunities for all of you. Let me specially recognize and appreciate the visitor and President of the Federal Republic, His Excellency Mohamedou Buhari, for his robust attempts to repositioning our beloved country and the general improvement weakness since 2015, especially in the Nigerian University system. I am particularly grateful to our Chancellor, whose presence in all the ceremonies of this 35th convocation has heralded a down for our institution. I also recognize and thank the Governor of Cross River State for his support for my administration and the university in general. I acknowledge the Cross River State Governor elect Senator Prince Basi Otu a proud alumnus of this institution, whose philosophy and temperament point to a highly productive relationship with the university. My Chancellor, sir, permit me to use this opportunity to inform you that the Governor-elect has asked me to congratulate you on your installation as the sixth Chancellor of our university. And he also says that he looks forward to working with you as Governor of Cross River State. I equally welcome especially our heads of security organizations and agencies who have been of tremendous support to the university, especially in the security challenges we are facing. I welcome captains of industries and all people of goodwill, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we had advertised that the university will be honoring some important Nigerians with the honorary Cosa degrees. However, due to some unforeseen and unexpected circumstances, this aspect of the program is postponed till next convocation. I warmly congratulate Professor Pax Ebon, our own distinguished professor, who is today going to be recognized as Emeritus Professor of this University. Congratulations. At the 35th Convocation, we are graduating today 553 PEHs. Hmm. This indeed is a steep climb from the 75 in the last Convocation in 2021. Sure. The high number of PhD graduates this year speaks for itself and demonstrates that our efforts are aimed at improving efficiency in the running of postgraduate programs are yielding the desired fruits, complemented by the seriousness of the candidates themselves. We will double up our efforts to provide the necessary facilities for more productive academic engagement and research. Our church. With a sense of accomplishment, while the sense of accomplishment could be overwhelming for many on this special day, we charge you to remain conscious of the demands of the PAG on you. Appropriacy of conduct, the right application of the knowledge you have acquired here for yourself 
and for the good of the society. The BIG program in our university is rigorous. And when you go through it successfully, you are thoroughly real. As alumni of our university, you should hold your heads high, knowing that you have a role of being a good ambassador of your alma mater by promoting its image through hard work, honesty, and attracting whatever opportunities you will have as you go forward here to your institution. We also employ captains of industries to seize the opportunity offered by the occasion to seek to engage those who have carried out researches in areas of interest. It is also an opportunity for industries and entrepreneurs to encourage and form researchers the results of products of which can turn around their business fortunes and impact the society positively. It is for this reason that we have a two-day research fair on the second and on the third as part of the 35th convocation activities. The research fair was supported by Fidelity Bank and attended by sister universities. The research fair was more robust this year than the previous years. It showcased amazing products of researchers, including patented inventions in different areas. By projecting the details of each PhD graduate, as we see here on the projector, indicating their name, their research topic and area of specialization, supervisor or supervisors, we get more information that can be helpful in contacting and engaging them. This is therefore a logic in the sequence of these convocation events for an enhancement of the handshake between the town and the gown. Our dilemma. One tradition of the university generally is to maintain standards and continue in the renewal of its of serve in this regard is the retention of best products. In view of this, first class graduates were automatically appointed as graduate assistants in the university so that they will not be lost to the sector, other sectors. The, the tradition is no longer maintained because of the location of approval in the center and the lack of that approval for engagement, even in the areas of need. It is for this reason, sadly, that at yesterday's convocation for first degrees, when we had 11 first class graduates, hmm. I could not make any pronouncement or promise any employment. It is lamentable that avoidable brain drain is occurring because of the problem of centralization of approval for employment in the university. This also implies that even the best PhD graduates cannot be retained in the system. At the end of it, we are the losers. That is the university system is the loser. Our scorecard, since the inception of my administration in December 2020, we have, had, we have made tremendous appreciation, appreciable progress in repositioning the university by introducing reforms in examination administration and conduct. We have completed the building of six new projects. We have completed equally two projects that were abandoned. We have provided lecture pavilions and office complexes. We have two new hostels to accommodate our students. Within the time, we have also carried out massive renovation, renovation of hostels, furnishing of classrooms, providing solar street lights, we have installed 
We have also provided drainages and resurfaced our roads for flood control. We are gradually achieving our smart campus goal through the utilization of ICT resources. Most of these have been achieved, thankfully, through the instrumentality of intervention agencies, for which we are deeply grateful. Despite our achievements, there are still a lot of challenges. And we are pleased to say where we are, there is hope for a better tomorrow for the University of California. Our challenges include the lack of a befitting Senate building, few hostels that accommodate more students. Going by NUC regulation, we should be accommodating 30% of our student population. Unfortunately, we accommodate less than 3%. We spend so much on electricity. Almost all that we raise as internally generated revenue goes into struggling to provide the energy need of the university. Hence, we struggle to cater for other competing needs. Our university library has developed a structural program that has prompted us to conduct it off through the advice of experts. In terms of security, the campus is very vulnerable to armed robbery and kidnapping due to its location beside the waterfront. We are in their need of funds to raise a perimeter fence around the waterfront. Equally tropical on our scale of preference are sporting facilities for the hosting of Google Games 2026. In appreciation of the excellent performance by our student athletes during competitions, Luga hosting right was ceded to the university. While we have few facilities on ground, we are in great need of multi-purpose indoor sporting hall. Standard swimming pools, basketballs, lawn tennis courts, upgrading of our stadium, laying of the tracks, etc. We earnestly appeal to government agencies, well meaning Nigerians and our alumni, to come to the assistance of the university in addressing these teaching problems before the end of this year. Because when Nuga executive come in to inspect our facilities, by March 2024, and we are not ready to host Buga in 2026, they might take the hosting right to another university. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I highly appreciate you all for being in this and identifying with our university. I'm grateful to the Governing Council under the dynamic leadership of the General Martin Luther Agua the management, senate, staff, and students for their support and solidarity. Let me specially thank and congratulate our graduates once more and also congratulate our own Professor Pat Ebon again. I pray God to lead you safely back to your destinations and your families. Thank you and God bless each other. Chukwu Dalugu and Modi Emmanuel Azuka, Charles Ude Gunam, Basi Basi Etu, Ife Duba, Namdi Chinedum, Okon Emmanuel Akaniyane, Jackson Jackson John, Ekpe Edemekon Lawson, Etu Victoria and Nephew, a Yakumbia, a Dominant Mariala, Daniel Okon, a Muk Edera Super of Free Majesty, a Tan, Emmanuel Lawrence, a Paul, a Song, a Song Abraham, a 
Man of Zia Henry, if I added on the main God, are you those who are not to sin? Oh God. Allied medical sciences, a warrior Raymond Econ, and Josephine Energy, a Benemet Chibima Emmanuel, or Dave Dina or Chuale, a Kaleme Martins Chilegun, the Hon Luzena Tekodo, or Co Econ Asuko, Simon Emmanuel, Officer Samuel Kaleji, and Nene Esupa. From the Faculty of Biological Sciences, Department of Plant and Ecological Studies, Marcy Rosemary and Etienne, Patrick Ishoro Akwadi, PhD in Genetics and Biotechnology, and Kareta Kareta Emmanuel, Umor Utamuno Barrett, Eswa Idara Solomon, Sashi Luka, I am Elvis. I am Elvis. A girl from a kite Godwin. Obi Bison Emmanuel. A Fanga Emmanuel of Fion. Imalele and Dema and Joan. A Tinosa of Kakan Studies. A John Rose Aiba. Or John Aganyi Asu, or Dr. Comfort Aben, Adida Francis at Kombende, Etan Itam Mbe, Ephraim Idomesi Emmanuel, Anipi Gabriel Esidene, Okon Glory James, Sam Ime Edex, Abang Thomas Agbo, Owo Erim Agbo, Egot Martins Richard, Tita Henry Ogbagu Oga Benedictina, Unamba J. Abraham Akibi, Kujo Jude Ubu, Apie Odion Apie, David Ebri Eni, Asuko Roslyn Victor, Mbe Patrick Anogo, Oman Teresa Ngum, Obibe Son Vera Mpun, Umo Odudu Bartolomeo, Efion Regina Christopher, Inyang Ntonga Yibaba, Esu Fidel Abasi, Olom Alice Ekwa, Omar Ayub Godwin, Department of Arts Education, Asiel Epo Messi Education, Ogabo Joseph Ode, Ayos, Idajo Clement Ojim, Edet Ime Patrick, Ofen Usani. Amang Soweni and Andre, Ekane Maria Okumba, Pedro Kameta, Ekane Maria Colomba, sorry, Ekong, Edu Mata, Nikorofen, Agbo Okwai, Oye Ipo, Olufo, Wafia Neri, Agbo Serial Blissom, Mungo Bidi Regina Ife Yuma, Mboto Ode Akomaye, on the Roslyn and Niopi, the Puri Padala and Jinse, James Lucy Akim, Osime Tupibian, Adam Amila, Peter, Ego Abigail Ojong, Ego Mekbala,
enter Eugene Ono Uwe Arif John Inwai Shek Victoria Ujitum Fon Umezurike Iken Na Samuel Eka Arif Elio Abtu Emmanuel Eta Apan Joseph Josephat Ogu Mike Jamil Judy Nso Onimpo Ndom the Department of Sociology, a war, a war, a chain, Okonkwa Azubike, Olga James Ajo, Okon Goodness Joseph, Colum Glory Efio, Iloje Ijoma Amuche, Henshaw Vera Ene, Ojo Ejo Mary, Uyilo Woman, Eta. Oye Eta, Bronson Barbara Ojong Okimasi Ode, Agara Ede Peter, Ubong Ede Asupo, Ekalu An Ud, Ejirese Chidehe Juliet, Ayu Clara Oben, Ogana Josephine Fidelis, Ogali Ugo, Aife Deje Shegun, of Bart Victor Jacob, Ndem Enyang Okon, Awusha Esther Benedict, Ekanem Ebu Asuko, Ide Teresa A.K. Eka, Ewangu, Simeon Samson Akam, Fortune Eye Etu, Margaret Ndem Ndiyo, Emmanuel Paul Ngele, Andrew Stevens, Thank you.